Hi there, my name is Mark Thwaites. I'm a Principal Technical Instructor here with Okta Education Services, and I want to take this time to be able to provide you with an overview of what to expect for the Okta Certified Professional Fast Track. Now, first of all, it's going to be a six-hour session, but it's broken up into three different parts. The first part is going to be four hours of instructor delivery, and that will be focused on lecture and demonstrations where we're covering topics such as defining users in Okta, giving out administrative rights, setting up group membership, then setting up an application with SAML for SSO, and then configuring provisioning Okta lifecycle management. We'll then look at using Profile Editor to be able to downstream data into our service provider using Universal Directory. We'll secure our Okta org with MFA. And then lastly, we'll offboard our identities. During that time frame, you'll be able to ask questions to refine your knowledge, but we're expecting that you already have this knowledge coming into the session because this is what's going to be tested in the hands-on exam. Now, before we get into the hands-on exam, you're going to be given a case study. The case study is going to allow you to understand what is going to be expected in the hands-on exam, and you'll have 30 minutes to review that and ask questions during that time frame. After that, you're going to be given unique credentials to log into an Okta org and an application service provider where you're going to have 90 minutes to complete the actual hands-on exam. And that will be broken up into four parts where we're going to specify exactly what needs to be completed to be able to move towards obtaining that certification. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to provide a demonstration on all the different areas that the instructor is going to be focusing on in that session so that you can look at those and see if you have that knowledge already. And if you don't, that would be a good area for you to kind of research and get some hands-on experience with within your own environment so that when you come to our session for that six hours, that first four hours can be focused on questions that you're trying to refine. So let's go ahead and get into that. The goal of this video is to be able to provide you with a visual representation or an overview of all the different components the instructor will configure, define, and set up within the certification fast track, that first four hours of the session. All right, now this org has already been predefined with all the demonstrations the instructor would do. So when we go ahead and review this, you just want to make sure that you understand how all these components work because we're expecting students to have this knowledge coming into the session so that when we're doing the actual demonstrations or reviewing the actual lecture material, it's something that you're already familiar with as an experienced admin. So that when we give you the case study, and you review that for 30 minutes before you do the hands-on exam, that when you do the hands-on exam and we give you an Okta org and we give you an application tenant, you're gonna be set up for success. But I think it's important that you see what we're gonna be doing in that session so that you can kind of prep ahead of time so you can fill in those gaps if those are areas where you need to do some improvements. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to directory and people. And you're going to see that there are going to be some people defined within the org ahead of time. Those are going to be used for us to be able to log in and assess your configurations. But it's also going to be an account that you're going to be given that has super admin access to do all the configurations that are expected as part of the hands-on exam. Some of those components will be creating some identities. In this example here, we have a service account created and a couple identities. One is going to be a help desk admin, while the other one is going to be a sales executive. Now, when you get into the hands-on exam, it's not going to be exactly the same people that you're going to create, but we are going to be focusing on the core components that you're going to need to configure. In addition to knowing how to create these identities, which is going to be done in the demonstration, we're also going to be covering the different states of the users and the users will need to be active so that you can log in with them with a certain password that will also be defined. And we're also going to be looking at the deactivation of these identities when they get offboarded. And that will be one of the last components. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on Tom Jones and we'll review the different tabs such as the application tab, the group tab and their purpose. And then we will spend some time on the profile tab. The profile tab is going to be very important because this is where you can edit the profile and you can start defining some attribute data. So in this case here, the title, 
and then the organization. As I mentioned earlier, when you're working in the hands-on exam, these elements may not be exactly the ones I'm showing, but they could be ones that you would be responsible to define. Now, one thing I will mention here is for our use case, our fictitious company is Okta Ice. That would be very similar to what you would be setting up within your hands-on exam, but the requirements could be a little bit different. For our example here, we have a reseller who's going to be selling ice cream for us, and we just want to note what company he works for, because this could be used for group assignment based on an attribute definition. I'm going to scroll back up here, and the next thing I'm going to go ahead and review is security and administrators. So one of the users that you're going to define is probably going to have to have some type of administrative access, so you're going to need to know how to do that. In our case here, Sally Field is going to be made a help desk administrator, so she's going to be assisting Okta Ice with doing Tier 1 operations. Next is going to be groups. So we're going to go to directory and groups, and here... There will be the everyone group, which is preceded in all orgs, but you're also going to be required to create some groups manually. Here we created a help desk group and we also created a sales group. And the membership of the groups can be defined either manually or dynamically using a group rule. You'll be expected to know how to do both. So in this example here, the help desk user, which in our case here is Sally Field, was added to the group manually. But when I do go back to my groups here, we can click on the sales group and you can see that Tom Jones is a member, but a rule is defining that membership. And if we actually go back to our groups and we go to our group rules, we'll be able to see how that group rule is defined. And in this case, you're all just deactivated and edit it. And you can see it basically says, if your organization attribute data starts with reseller, then we'll put them into the sales group. And once I activated that rule, it automatically puts Tom Jones into that group. So that will be just a concept that you'll need to understand how groups are created and how group rules can be used to define membership automatically. The next concept is going to be applications. So if I go to applications, you can see that our test application that we're leveraging is salesforce.com. But when you are given the hands-on exam, the application could be slightly different. But let's just go ahead and take a look at this application. So in the demonstration, the instructor is going to go through all the different tabs, but they're really going to focus in on the sign-on tab to start off with because the application that you're going to be configuring is going to be requiring SAML 2.0 to be configured. They'll review the view setup instructions and also how the IDP metadata could be loaded into the service provider. And they're going to go through the entire configuration on the steps on how to do that within the service provider. And once the service provider has been configured with that SAML configuration, basically bringing that ACS URL back into Okta so it can complete the federation. And for us to be able to test out the flow, then we'll look at the assignments tab. And this is where you will most likely test it with an actual user. But one thing you'll note here is that this user does not exist in the service provider yet because that will be covered in the next module, which will be tied to provisioning. But the instructor will show you how to actually test out the actual SAML integration before you do any type of provisioning integration. So that will lead into our next topic, which will be provisioning. Uh, provisioning is going to be a direct API integration with the service provider. So not only are we going to be giving you a service provider with a service account that you can log in with, but that same account will also be used for the API integration. We'll be focusing specifically on provisioning into the app where you're going to be creating, updating, and deactivating identities that are associated with this application via the assignments tab. Once we go ahead and assign people to the app, you're going to need to understand how to assign people to the app individually and also in a group capacity. And also, we're going to give you the actual license that will be used to be consumed by that application. So in this example here, Tom Jones is assigned to the application. He has an external ID, which means that we're linked to that identity in the service provider. And for a license for this user here, 
uh, he has a chatter-free user license. So in the hands-on exam, we'll specify exactly which profile or license will be used for testing out the flow. Next is gonna be getting into universal directory. Now in Okta, there isn't a universal directory section. Instead, we have the profile editor. When you come into the profile editor, you're gonna see that there will be a profile for Okta and there'll be a profile with the associated app. And what we're ultimately gonna do here is we're gonna be creating an attribute in the Okta profile. So in our case here, we actually are gonna create a custom attribute called favorite ice cream flavor. And this attribute actually exists in our test Salesforce tenant, and we're gonna synchronize that directly into Okta. So as a kind of a component here, you're gonna to need to understand how to use the profile editor to be able to create an attribute within Okta, but also pull in an attribute from a service provider using the add attribute button. And when I click on this add attribute button, this is going to kick off a schema discovery to show you all the attributes which are not natively associated with the profile. This becomes a very important concept to understand because when you get into the mapping of data from Okta into your service provider, we're going to give you a list of all the attributes that need to map data over. And if it's missing in the actual destination, then you're going to have to understand how that add attribute button works to be able to associate it with your application profile so the mapping of the data will be successful. So in this case here, we're mapping over the title attribute and the custom attribute in our case was the favorite ice cream flavor. Now we're not gonna expect for you to understand how to create custom attributes in the service provider because that's something you do in the service provider itself. But in the actual hands-on lab, we'll specify which attributes which are already in the profile that we need to go ahead and associate with. And then lastly is understanding that when you go ahead and update information in their identity, that information should downstream successfully. So in this example here, when I go back to Tom Jones and I look at his profile data, here I'm just passing over the title and the favorite ice cream flavor, but in the hands-on lab, we may have other attribute data that you need to pass over. And you'll just need to make sure that that is passing over successfully using the API integration. So kind of coming full circle here, when we go back to applications and we go back to salesforce.com, understanding the provisioning setup is really integral because there's gonna be multiple items that are gonna be tested here. Not only are we gonna be creating people in the service provider with that creation option, but universal directory will be validated with Okta Lifecycle Management using the updating of the user attributes. And then to wrap up the entire hands-on exercise, you're gonna be offboarding an employee and they're gonna to need to be automatically deactivated in the service provider when they're deactivated in Okta and they're removed from this application. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at here before we get into the actual offboarding is gonna be the security framework. So we're gonna be focusing specifically on multi-factor. So we'll be focusing on factor types first we're not gonna be working with any type of third-party vendors, but in our example here, we got Okta Verify, SMS, and a security question. I would expect those to be very similar in your hands-on exam. And then for factor enrollment, it's imperative that you understand the difference between factor enrollment and factor enforcement. So enrollment is gonna be when the users enroll into certain factors. So here I have a sales group, which is gonna be applying to Tom Jones because he's a member of that group. And he's only gonna be able to enroll into Okta Verify and a security question because SMS has been disabled. But when the enrollment actually gets triggered, he'll have to set up a security question, but Okta Verify will be optional. And the enrollment trigger is actually gonna be defined in the rule. And down here in the bottom, you can see that I have MFA enrollment will not affect these administrators if they ever get put into this group. And regardless of their location, in this case, they're gonna enroll into MFA the next time they sign in. Now, the last thing we'll mention here is if we go to security and authentication, this is where we'll do the actual enforcement. So we're gonna be focusing on the sign-on tab where we can set up an Okta sign-on policy. Again, this will be for sales and this will affect Tom Jones. And if we scroll down and edit the actual rule, we have the same type of exclusion that is defined. 
Here, we can go ahead and specify that maybe for MFA enforcement, it's going to occur when they are not in a current zone. And in this case here, we have a corporate zone defined. So that'll be another thing the instructor will demonstrate so that you understand how network zones are created and how they could be implemented in policies. So policies could be executed when maybe they're in a zone or out of a zone. All right, let me go ahead and just scroll down here to the bottom. And you can see that access is going to be granted into the Okta org, so they're not going to be blocked. But there will be a step up for a factor, and it'll happen every single time that they log in based on the conditional definition above, which is when they're not in the corporate zone. We're not going to be expecting that you have depth and breadth and behavior detection and risk scoring. So it'll just be the foundation knowledge that are tied to the sign-on policies. All right, so we'll go ahead and just cancel this. And what I will do is I'll go back to security and now networks. And this is where the network was defined for this corporate office. So understanding how network zones are created and how they're used in the policy is also going to be essential for success. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do offboarding. So I'm going to go to directory and people. And what I'll do is I'll scroll down to Tom Jones, who is currently an active user. And we're going to go ahead and terminate him. So right now he's assigned to Salesforce. So as soon as I deactivate his account by going to more actions and deactivate, he's not only going to not be able to log into Okta, but all of his apps will be unassigned. He's not deleted out of the Okta org. So theoretically, we could reactivate his account if we onboarded again. And he would be assigned to the application because he's still a member of that group. But if we do go to applications and we take a look at that Salesforce application that we set up earlier with Okta Lifecycle Management, then the last item will be validated, which will be the deactivation flow. So here you can see that that's enabled. So as soon as they were removed from the application, that kicked off an API call to deactivate that identity in the service provider. And that's something that will also validate in the service provider as well. All right, so that completes our demonstration on all the core items that the instructor will cover in that four hour session before you are given the case study and then actually do the hands-on exam. All right, so that is gonna complete our Okta Certified Professional Fast Track Overview. I wanna thank you very much for reviewing this video before you attend the actual event and we're looking very forward to actually delivering it. So we'll see you there.